As Congress gets back to work, lawmakers are putting the war in Gaza at the top of their agenda. And the Biden administration is hearing from a growing number of protesters who are against the U.S. sending aid to Israel. NBC's Alice Barr has the latest. A return to the halls of Congress and a long to-do list for lawmakers at the top approving more funding for Ukraine and Israel. The long-sought deal made more complicated by some Democratic lawmakers' push to condition Israeli military assistance on better protections for civilians and aid workers. The Senate's top Republican accusing President Biden, who stood by Israel, of caving to political pressure. He indulged his radical base and called for an immediate ceasefire. Enough is enough. How many children have to die? Pro-Palestinian protesters interrupting Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's budget testimony. He made the case for lawmakers to approve Israel and Ukraine funding while pressing for Israel to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza and to separate civilians from Hamas. Failure to do so, I think, would, would just... Create more terror. We, the secretary rejected arguments that Israel is committing genocide against the Palestinian people. We don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. In Gaza, civilians are returning to ruins after Israeli troops withdrew from the southern city of Khan Yunis. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declaring no force in the world will stop an Israeli ground offensive in the overcrowded city of Rafah, saying he's set a date to go in, despite U.S. officials pushing Israel to change course to protect civilians, while Hamas holds out on a deal to pause the fighting and free the hostages. House Speaker Mike Johnson has promised to put billions in foreign aid on the floor for a vote, despite threats from at least one far-right member that that move could cost him his speaker's job. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News.